So what are the minimum specs when choosing a Chromebook for schoolwork? We're going to find out. All right, welcome back to my channel. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about Chromebooks. If you're actually looking for a Chromebook for school, there's basically five different criteria that I look at to make sure it meets the minimum specs so you're going to be happy with it. And uh, I'll go through, I'm going to go through those five specs today and just show people what I think are the five best things to look for when you're buying a Chromebook. Again, this is going to be something maybe for schoolwork or for even just basic, you know, home use. It, it's not going to be the best and the greatest. It's going to be what's good enough. So what can you buy in a Chromebook that's just good enough that's going to get you by where you're not going to feel like it's really slow? So what are the kind of the minimum specs? And I'm going to show you a couple different things that are going to be very simple. And then I'm going to show you a couple things. I'm going to do a screenshot and show you exactly how to search for like your CPU on the Chromebooks to see how fast they are. Stay tuned for that. And that's kind of the main one is, you know, do a search on, your, on the CPU that it comes with. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So you can see how fast it is. I kind of have a threshold for that and I'm going to get into that. So let's get into it without further ado. I just want to show people, you know, if you're going to buy a Chromebook for school or for work, what are kind of the minimum specs you want to look for? You know, what is going to be fast enough to get you through the day where you're not just begging for more power? Let's get into it. All right, number one is going to be the screen. So what I recommend doing is an 11 inch screen on a Chromebook is just way, way too small. All right, it's going to be way, way too small for this. What you want to do is you want to look for a screen that's probably like in the 13 and a half inch, somewhere in that range, 13 inch, um, up to 15 inch. 17.5 inch is going to be, again, way, way too large. So what you want to do is look for a screen, you know, in this general size range. So I recommend definitely 11 inches too small. Try to get like the 13 to 15 inch for, for getting work done. Otherwise, you're going to be kind of squinting at everything. For kids, that's okay, 11 inch. But for an adult, I would say 13 to 15 inch is perfect. Now the resolution on the screen too, this actually is a Chromebook that I picked up. A little bit of glare there and I'm not going to, it's not so much about this one. Um, but what's really important is the resolution. I would definitely go with a 1080p resolution on the Chromebook. And the reason for that is you're going to be spending a lot of time looking at the screen. And in ge you know, generally, that's, it's going to be very difficult on your eyes. And I'm talking when you're doing school work or just general work and, you know, just, just even going on the web or looking at, you know, online browsing. So I would always recommend 1080p minimum. There's going to be things like, you know, 1366 by 768. That's usually the resolution that's down one. And usually with text and stuff, that's not that clear. So that's, let's, let's you know, if you can find one in the, in the 1080p range, I would go with that one. Oh yeah, and the touch screen on this, you don't really need it. I have seen no reason for it unless you're going to use Android apps again. So touch screen is not a requirement. All right, the main thing I want to talk about, number two out of the five, is going to be the CPU. So the CPU is going to give you the ability to get things done. I mean, there's going to be RAM and disk and other stuff, which we'll get into in a second. But the power of this, a lot of Chromebooks come with either Celerons or they come with sometimes ARM processors or they come with chips that you've never even heard of before. It's usually low-end chips because Chrome can run on, you know, it's not like a Windows environment where it can run, it takes a lot to run. It can run on just about anything. So. The question is, is how do you determine if the CPU that you're going to buy is good enough? Well, I have a theory. So I'm going to show you guys in a second. We're going to do a screenshot and I'm going to show you how to figure this out. So what you want to do is you want to find the actual CPU that you're going to buy and I'm going to punch it into a system here and there's going to be a value of over 2000. I'll tell you what this means, but if it's over 2000, what I found is it can get the work done and it's not going to be stuttering and not be way too slow. If it's over the 2000 mark, then you're going to be perfectly fine. If it's under, you're going to have some problems. So let me go ahead and show you what I mean here, and we're going to check out the CPUs. All right, let me show you what I mean by this. So let's just say you're on, you're on Amazon and you're looking at Chromebooks and you find one. Let's just look at this one right here. So let's go ahead and click on this. And let's say you find this one, and you can see it always tells you this, this, the chip here. It's an Celeron N4020. So what you want to do is you want to copy that. Once you copy that, what you want to do is, there's a, if you go to and you type in CPU benchmark, there's a site called Passmark Software here. You can see it. You click on this, and this is going to tell you what this range of numbers I'm telling you is. So what you want to do is you can look at all of them. You can go to high end. But down here on the left-hand side, you can search for a CPU here. So what you want to do is you want to go ahead and actually search for it. Let me go back. Actually, I clicked the wrong button. Here's the search right there. So it's going to give you a little search box. What you do is you're going to copy that Celeron in there, find CPU, and look at it here. So this is actually going to be 1625 is the score. And what I just told you before was, you know, the range is really 1400 or higher for, for uh, uh, Chromebooks. It's really 2000 or up and a lot higher than that for Windows machines. But I've noticed that 1400 to about 2000, so this falls within that range, is going to run the Chromebook 
pretty well. All right, RAM. So everyone knows that a Chromebook can run on two gigs of RAM sometimes. I wouldn't recommend it at all, especially now in 2021. So what I say is the minimum, bare minimum as you want is four gigs of RAM with the Chromebook. I would try to get six if you can get six. I know it's kind of a rare number. And if you can get eight, all the better. I don't think you need any more than eight on a Chromebook. Um, people can argue that, but I don't think you do. Four is gonna be sufficient. It can run pretty good in most cases. I mean, if you have tons of tabs open and stuff, it may, may struggle a little bit. But four is gonna be the minimum. Six is what I recommend you know, for the, the average, I guess, that I would go with. And then eight is gonna be something that I would say, if you can get it, take it, but don't spend a ton of money just to get that. All right, number four is gonna be the hard drive on here. So, you know, basically Chrome stores everything in the cloud. And so when you're dealing with a system like this and you're looking at the hard drive in here, obviously if it doesn't have a hard drive that you can replace or anything like that, like a typical laptop might. So what you wanna do is you wanna get a little bit of storage, and I recommend at least 32 gigabytes. And it needs to have enough so you can download some files, but also, you know, you don't need a ton because a lot of your stuff is gonna be stored on Google Cloud and things like that. Um, also, I'll get into this in a second, but if you have ports, you probably want, you know, USB ports, and you also want maybe a micro SD so you can actually add external storage to this, and that'll make this perfect. If you're gonna be downloading a ton of Android apps, but that's your main goal for getting a Chromebook, which it's possible to do, you know, download Android apps, then maybe go with 64 gigabytes or 128 gigabytes, somewhere in that range. Get the extra space on here. But the bare minimum for schoolwork and for work would be, you know, 32 to 64, somewhere in that range. I say 32 in the low end. Don't go with 16 any longer in 2021, it's gonna be, you know, you don't want that. 32 is on the lower side, maybe 64 is in the middle. That's what I recommend. So let's move on to the next one. All right, finally number five is gonna be ports. And then we're gonna actually, after this, we're gonna get into, I'm gonna show you a couple different, you know, uh, Chromebooks that I would recommend just that fall into this range right now. Um, and I'm just gonna show it to you. I actually have one here, but I'm gonna show you a couple just online on Amazon and stuff. The ports are really important. So what I recommend doing is I recommend if you're gonna pick up a Chromebook for school or for work, you want at least two USB-A ports and, uh, and then you want an HDMI port as well. Um, now the HDMI is optional, but if you're gonna be plugging this into a monitor or a TV or something because you wanna do some of the presentation or something, it's usually good to have that on there. And then if you can get a USB-C port, that's gonna be a bonus. I mean, a lot of these don't ship with those yet, but uh, 2021, a lot more are starting to ship with them. So definitely a USB-C port's a bonus, but if you can get that, um, I totally recommend getting that with it. Um, and then the other ones that are optional, not, not optional, you definitely wanna have a headphone jack because if you're gonna be doing work like at a library or something, you need that. So make sure you have that. But the other one that's gonna you know, uh, really, really kind of be optional is the SD card. Um, I highly recommend getting an SD card on a Chromebook. I mean, obviously this one doesn't have one, but I can actually plug in into my USB type A. But if I don't want a dongle or something hanging off this, get an SD card because then you can do all your storage since you only have 32, 64, 128 gigabytes on this. You can do all of your storage on that SD card and it works really well. So I highly recommend that if you're gonna be getting a system like this, you know, make sure you have the SD card, but it's not a requirement. All right, and then one special mention I wanted to say is Chromebooks, uh, the age of the Chromebook is gonna be they're gonna update the OS eight years after you purchase the device, eight years. So just make sure that you get you know, a system that if you're gonna be buying it refurbished or used, and I'm gonna show you a couple online and stuff, and that may, these will be new and stuff, but make sure you buy it um, eight, you know, you have, it's gonna be eight years from the date that they start, started producing that system, so it may not be the exact time when you buy it. So make sure you get a system that's got a couple years of life so that you can keep getting the OS and security updates on your Chrome OS. But Google actually upped it to about eight years now, about eight years is from what I've read. That's a long time to get updates. So you can go back maybe four years by maybe a refurbished system that meets this criteria and uh, you'll still be okay for another four. All right, and then just to wrap this up, I just wanted to show, here's a couple different examples. So here's a Samsung, it's a Chromebook. It's got a 15.6 inch screen, which is in my range. It's basically gonna have the N4000 CPU, which is over the, six, or over the 1400 score that I told you about. Four gigs of RAM, which is kind of the minimum, but it definitely will run Chrome. 32 gigs, which again is the minimum, but it runs it. And this is 277. I'll have a link to this in the description, but this would meet the criteria that I'm talking about. And, uh, and just really quickly, if you scroll down, it is a 1080, 920 by 1080, so it's a 1080p screen as well. Another one in here would be 
Let's just look at this one. It's a 2020 Acer Chromebook, so it meets the OS update. It's a 1080p screen. It's got the Celeron N4020, which is definitely more than 1400. Four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs, which is good storage, webcam. So again, this would meet it as well. I'll have a link to this in the description. But I mean, just long story short, these are ones that you can buy if you want to. Um, but again, just look for that criteria and you should be good. All right, well, I'm gonna wrap this up. So I hope you guys like the suggestions if you're gonna use a Chromebook for you know work or school. Um, these are the minimums that I kind of recommend. Hopefully you can follow the CPU one because that's actually pretty important. Also, the other ones are gonna be a little bit more optional, but those are things that you wanna look for in a Chromebook 2021. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know what else you wanna look for in a Chromebook. And if you have any other suggestions for the video, I can definitely add comments or I'll make another one eventually. Um, I make videos on all kinds of technology, including Chromebooks, but I mostly I do mostly Apple and then some PC and then some gadgets and things. Check out my channel. It's all about buying, you know, definitely technology that's going to be good technology for less money and trying to find deals and places. So I do a lot of deal type stuff and uh, subscribe if you can uh, and also help me out by clicking the like button if you can. So talk to you guys soon. Until the next video, peace.